how deep time started to be discovered in archaeology. Imagine looking at the world and saying, this is it and this is what it always has been. That sounds a bit strange, doesn't it? But this was the almost unrelatable way that Western science viewed the world until the mid-19th century. Then came a revolution in thought. Humanity discovered they were floating on top of present that had a long and distant, unknowable past in constant flux. Today, it's common to look at the world as having a history and a prehistory, a series of actions that build on one another. But it took shifts in thought to reach where we are today. Taking a biblical approach to creating time frame of history, the Usher chronology charts the history of the world, taking the Old Testament literally. It was created by James Usher, who found that the first day of creation was October 23rd, 4004 BC. Loosely put, his calculations were based on using extra biblical sources in classical text and calculating backwards in time to the point of creation. His 17th century approach is not what is important. Rather, his mindset viewed the world that had no prehistory, merely a creation. But in 1719, John Freer made the finding of flint weapons four meter under a former sand bed, in his words, containing bones of extinct animals and marine creatures. This was extraordinary. Uh, so we have uh, artifacts of humans and extinct animals in the same deposit. This moment was revolutionary, a mild observation. It was extraordinary in its nature as it led to the conclusion that if these humans who made those same artifacts existed when these animals did, then it must mean that humanity can also be older. Freer unfortunately died before he could carry out more of his research, and the body of evidence at the time was limited from creating a paradigm shift, but he was a stepping stone in the evolution of thought in which scientists came to realization that their understanding of the past was not all what it seemed. At the same time as Freer, William Smith was laying the groundwork for the fundamental theories of geological sedimentations and layers, that is stratigraphy. This was also something that was clear to Freer, that there were a series of strata or layers. Those at bottom will be older than those at top, as one layer comes to exist after another which may be used for relative chronology. Geologists of 1800s use this principle of superposition to arrange fossils from strata in developmental sequences. However, what we need to know, geology and archeology span are not the same. In archeology, span stratification is defined as a number of relatable deposits of archeological strata, not geological. These are the results of successive operation of nature or culture. Stratigraphy in archaeology is rather the stu study of archaeological strata arranged in chronological sequence. So there is interlink between discovering the past of humans and the past of Earth's geology. Charles Lyell published a series of works in 1830s titled The Principles of Geology. He made the firm argument that erosion and sedimentation created deposited layers in the geological record, which were the result of slow, gradual changes. What's more, this had direct consequences in archaeology. However, if the slow erosion of wind and water, as well as gradual deposition caused by rivers and oceans were the reasons for stratification, it must have needed an immense expense of time to do so, far longer than mere biblical flooding.
There were even sufficient finds of human bones in early geological deposits accumulated in many parts of Europe for Lyle to publish on the geological evidences of the antiquity of man in 1863. Ultimately, observing erosion and layers of stratification provided a trigger to conclude that observing mechanisms that could be readily seen in the present was also key to recognizing the past. Therefore, the ideas about deep prehistory first came to be articulated in the 19th century. Without that initial trigger, there was no instance for us to be triggered into remembering or looking for that deep past. As Gavin Lucas said, that is a past that was never ours to remember.